afternoon, everyone. I uh, want to uh, report some slight changes in uh, the systems that we were tracking yesterday that were uh, invest, both invest. Both of these systems are now uh, slated as tropical depressions, which means they have elevated in their intensity slightly. We'll start off with uh, tropical depression 14 that was 97 yesterday. That is the system that is moving along a more southerly course. It is projected to make its way across uh, Honduras uh, sometime late tomorrow. Uh, and then it would hit and come across land, make landfall in the northern part of Mexico uh, sometime very early Sunday morning. This storm is expected to disrupt somewhat as it goes across uh, Mexico. Uh, what, it, what happens when it gets out in the Gulf uh, is uncertain right now, but we're pretty certain given the models uh, tracking the storm that it will make landfall somewhere along the uh, southwestern Texas coast uh, or as far around as the uh, southeastern Louisiana coastline. Uh, again, currently this system does not not project to make a direct landfall on Mississippi. Depending on the intensity and what it does, we will certainly have some effects. Uh, the second system is one that I'm more concerned about at this particular time. It's Tropical Depression 13. It was named Invest 98 yesterday. Uh, this system is approximately uh, a day or two behind the system we got, working a more northerly track. Uh, it is projected to be in the vicinity of the Dominican Republic at some point in time early Sunday morning as it tracks its way uh, to the uh, northeastern uh, portion of Cuba uh, and expected to make landfall somewhere in the vicinity of Florida uh, very, uh, very early Tuesday morning. Uh, from there, uh, a lot of the models show that storm making a, a northeasterly hook back out uh, up along the east coast, potentially out into the Atlantic. But the concerns for me are there are a few models that do show that system coming across the Florida uh, and into the Gulf of Mexico. And then from there, it could uh, pose to be a serious threat for Mississippi. So just a reminder to everyone, there are a number of distractions that everybody's dealing with now with COVID, kids going back to school, so forth and so on. It is important that you remember to check your emergency supply kits. Make sure that you have a plan and a place to go if you are needed to evacuate and as a reminder, uh, with COVID and occupying congregate shelters, uh, the risk of exposure is increased there, and we want to make sure that, that we uh, uh, utilize those only in cases uh, that, are most, uh, that are most important, but have a plan to please evacuate. Uh, quick update on COVID. Uh, real quickly, PP deliveries are continuing to go out. As of tomorrow, we will have delivered to 90 Tier 1 facilities. So again, uh, great Herculean effort by our soldiers, men and women of the Air and Army National Guard in supporting that event. Finally, update on the Mississippi Emergency Relief uh, Program. Total applications up to date, uh, just over 700 at 705, and total project submissions of about 29 and upwards of $13 million in those. So we still got a ways to go, encouraging the counties and municipalities to get those applications in. And then finally, on Census 2020, just a plug on that, please make sure that you participate in the census because that plays a big role in how the disaster grants are tabulated for states. Very important for Mississippi. Governor, that concludes my update, sir.